story of a doctor determined to shape his own future by rewriting his past. Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow presents Past Tense, starring Boris Karloff with Robert Simon and Catherine Mesko. Hello and welcome to Tales of Tomorrow. And I know you'll welcome news of today's most revolutionary development in watch bands for men. Here it is. America's most beautiful watch band, the Double Feature by Chrysler. Now, let me tell you why Double Feature is so different. For the first time in any watch band, anywhere, Chrysler has combined the magnificent looks of a solid gold bracelet with the solid comfort and convenience of an expansion watch band. And that's why it's called the Double Feature. The solid bracelet top of the model you see here has genuine leather inlays, and as you can see, the back has the famous Chrysler expansion links. Speaking of the expansion links, notice they're placed only where they can't pinch skin or catch hairs. Now, just look at this model of Chrysler's double feature watch band. The gleaming faceted top looks like solid gold. It's truly beautiful. And it's superbly styled to flatter square case watches. Or if you wear a round watch, then this double feature band with curved ends is specially designed to fit that round watch. Blends perfectly, no unsightly gaps. Whichever double feature you choose, the price is only $12.50, including the federal tax. The Chrysler double feature is the best looking watch band a man can wear. Double feature will transform even an ordinary watch into a timepiece of distinctive beauty. Make your watch look twice as expensive, twice as smart. So for the only watch band in the world that combines the beauty of a solid gold bracelet with the solid comfort of a stretch band, buy yourself the dramatic new two-in-one watch band, the modern Double Feature by Chrysler. And now to our story. Past Tense, starring Boris Karloff with Robert Simon and Catherine Mesko. Don't they ever wash the windows in this dismal place? Are you kidding, Doctor? Whoever washes windows in a place like this? It might let the sunlight in. Yes, I know what you mean. Uh, how is he? Not, too, not, at all, not at all good. I hope this hypo will quiet him. It looks pretty bad to me. Uh, it's pneumonia, isn't it? Yes. Complete consolidation of both lobes. Has he reached the crisis yet? This morning. Temperature's been going up ever since. I'm afraid he hasn't a chance. Well, maybe he's better off. I wish we knew more about him. I've never come across a patient like this one. He's never had a visitor. No family, no relatives. Not even a friend. Nobody seems to know where he came from. Yet he has a knowledge of medicine that sometimes makes me feel like a young intern. Mm, let's see, it's uh, six months since we sent him here, isn't it? Just about. And still has that same obsession? Hasn't varied a bit. Insists he's a man from the future. Penicillin. Penicillin. There he goes again. Same Penicillin. fixation about that drug. Hmm? Yeah. Penicillin. Hasn't stopped talking about it since you brought him here. Isn't there anything at all we can do for him? Nothing at all. No, I'm afraid that December 3rd, 1910, will mark the end of Harry Marco and of his delusions about a miraculous cure all this wonder drug that he calls penicillin in a minute jane in a minute in a minute nothing open this door 
Harry, Harry Marco, open this door immediately. Do you hear me? What are you doing down there? All right, all right, I'm coming. Take it easy. Don't break the door down. What's the matter now? What's the matter? A patient is waiting for you, and I've been buzzing for 15 minutes. Oh, let him wait. I'm busy. Now, look here, Harry Marco. Instead of fooling around down here, you should be in your office taking care of your patients. I've got more important things on my mind. Well, I haven't, and I'm tired of you neglecting everything for this. Patients are sweet these days, Harry, and you're driving away the few that are left with your indifference. Doesn't matter, Jane. Believe me, this is more important. Is it? Well, I'm tired of making excuses and hiding from bill collectors while you waste your time on this fantastic, stupid, comic book idea of yours. A time machine. Comic book idea, eh? What would you say, Jane, if I told you that I'd finally solved the riddle of time? That with this machine, I can go back in time. Go back as far as I like, to any point in history. What would you say then? I'd say you're crazy. Well, we'll see if I'm crazy or not. I tell you, Jane, I'm tired of being poor. Tired of treating colds and belly aches, turning out at all hours of the night whenever somebody's baby has the colic. Well, what about the patient upstairs? He won't wait much longer. Let him go. I'm busy. Busy? What? what are you trying to do? I'm going to smash that machine, Harry. It's no good. I don't care a thing about the past. What's bothering me is the future, and it's time you earned a living. Stop it! Stop it, I said. Now get out of here. Get out! Don't you ever try to touch that machine again. Harry Marco, I'm going to smash that machine if it's the last thing I do. Thinks I'm losing my mind, eh? Why, I'll show her more money than she's ever dreamed of. I'll show her that the past can really be profitable. machine works. I knew it. I knew it. I'm going back through the past. Back through the years that I have lived before. There they are. I'm seeing again events that have become history. Oh, I wish I could stop and relive some of those great moments. But I can't. I must go back further. If my plan works, I'll be rich. If it works, if it doesn't, who knows? But I think you should listen to this man, Dr. Giles. Oh, nonsense. I can't listen to every crackpot who comes here with a magic potion. But this man seems to know what he's talking about. He's not a harebrained chemist. He's a doctor. I never heard of him. 
Neither have I, but I'm convinced that he has something. All right, all right. Bring him in. I'll let him have five minutes. Five minutes will be enough. Dr. Marco. Dr. Harry Marco, this is our director. Dr. How do you do? How do you, do? you seem to be rather dressed in a rather unusual fashion. Where do you come from? Does that really matter? <laughs> no, I guess not. Well, what's this cure-all you bewitched Dr. Lasky with? I didn't exactly say it was a cure-all. Oh, it's by no means a cure-all. But it will cure a great many diseases that you now think fatal. Oh, well, where is it? Let's have a look at this miracle drug. There it is, Doctor. Hmm. It's an odd-looking container. What's it made of? The scale of a dragon and the tooth of a wolf? <laughs> a very literate question, Doctor. But this is no witch's brew. If you're not interested, I'm sure some of your competitors will be. Oh, just a moment, Doctor. Just a minute. <clears throat> you seem to be rather sure of yourself. Just what do you want? I want a quarter of a million dollars in U.S. Treasury bonds maturing in 30 years, maturing in 1953. A quarter of a million dollars? For what? For an untried medicine that you claim is a panacea? Dr. Lasky here tells me that you have an arrangement with the Mercy Hospital to test new medicines on ward patients. Well, that's right, but only after the drugs have passed the lab stage. I understand your position. I appreciate it. Unfortunately, I haven't time for long, drawn-out, tedious lab tests. But give me one of your sickest patients. Someone who is far gone with pneumonia, meningitis, gas gangrene. And let me show you what this drug can do. Oh, you should know better than that, Doctor. I can't sanction using an unknown drug on patients. Uh, what do you call this medicine? Afraid the name won't mean very much, dear. Its name is... Penicillin. Penicillin, huh? <laughs> That's a very fancy name. Well, the answer is no. And I'm surprised at you, Dr. Lassie, for condoning such an unethical idea. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have more important things to do. He doesn't know what he's passing up. Well, thanks, Lasky. You tried, anyhow. Wait. I may be sticking my neck out, but I believe you. There's a patient in the ward, a young girl, type 4 pneumonia. She can't last more than a few hours. Come on, what are we waiting for? Wait a minute. This could mean my finish. There's nothing to worry about, Doctor. I assure you, there's absolutely no risk. I hope you're right, Marco. I hope you're right. change? She's worse, Doctor. Do you want to listen to her chest? Yes. Give me a sterile syringe. Going to give her 300,000 units. We'll repeat the dose in an hour. What are you giving her, Doctor? Oh, that doesn't matter, Nurse. This is highly irregular, Doctor. It certainly is. to give her another 300,000 units.
Marco. She's dead. Hello? Say, is there a magician in the house? That's right. I am. Now, let me show you a little trick. You see my little magic bag here? Now, watch very closely, ladies. As you see, there's absolutely nothing in the little magic bag. Now, watch this trick. I'm going to take this very ordinary-looking watch, drop it into the little magic bag, and then, with the magic words, presto, acapit, boo-boo, and what else, we're going to show you the trick. Now, let's take another look. I'm going to transform this very ordinary watch into an expensive-looking, costly timepiece. Let's take another look. Mm-hmm. How about that? The watch has been transformed into a sparkling, costly-looking bracelet watch. Of course, you know this is just a trick. The real magic is in this beautiful Golden Fantasy watch band by Chrysler. The Golden Fantasy can magically transform your watch into a high-fashion, expensive-looking bracelet watch. And it costs only $9.95. The new Golden Fantasy watch band is a fabulous piece of jewelry. It will fit even the smallest watch, transform it into a fashionable bracelet timepiece of thrilling new beauty. Ask for it by name. It's Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. Whether you like the classic tailored style or the one with sparkling jewels, there's a Golden Fantasy to please your taste. Whichever you choose, the sculptured beauty of Golden Fantasy will attract admiring glances. Make your watch noticeably new and smart looking. So convenient, easy to put on, easy to slip up out of the way when you work around the house. And remember, Golden Fantasy costs less than many ordinary watch bands, only $9.95 federal tax included. So to transform your watch into a fashionable bracelet watch or as a gift for a loved one, see your jeweler and ask for the fabulous Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. And now back to our story. Past Tense, starring Boris Karloff. And you say Dr. Lasky permitted this stranger to inject this fluid into your patient? Yes, sir. Over my express objections. Thank you, nurse. That's all. Dr. Giles, well, asking. You're through. And I'm bringing you up on charges of unethical practice at the next meeting of the medical board. But, sir... I hold you responsible for the death of that girl. She was dying. Nothing would have helped her. She'd have died anyway. That doesn't excuse you. You deliberately disobeyed my orders in allowing this quack to use an unknown, untried medicine on a patient. Oh, just a minute, sir. That unfortunate girl's death proves nothing. We were too late, that was all. She was beyond all help, even at a penicillin. It's unfair and grossly unscientific to jump to conclusions with only one case. What would you like to do? Kill a few more patients before you're satisfied? Oh, of course not. But in that same ward, there's a patient with gas gangrene. Now, let me use my drug on him, and I give you my word, in two or three days, he'll be on the road to recovery. No, no, I can't permit it. I told you before, I will not sanction the use of drugs unless until we've made the proper lab tests on them. I understand, Doctor. But in the meantime, I've placed Dr. Lasky in rather an unfortunate position, and I'd like to vindicate him, at least. So take this drug. Use it any way you like. Make all your lab tests. And when it proves its value, as I know it will, then we can talk business. Business? I don't do business with quacks, and I have no time for your miraculous cure-alls. Now, I'll thank you to leave the office. Dr. Giles? You will regret this decision in the not-too-distant future. Good day, Doctor.
<laughs> Not thinking of smashing the machine again, are you? You startled me. Sorry, Jane. Jane, I'm going away again. Maybe for a week, ten days, perhaps longer. But don't disturb anything in this room and keep the door locked. Where are you going, Harry? Does that make any difference? Well, I would like to know what you're up to. Where did you go when you disappeared last week? I went back into the year 1923. Oh, now, Harry, don't joke with me. I'm serious. You haven't been the same since that day. What did you do? I tried to sell some moldy bread, but they wouldn't buy. Oh, now, Harry, really? The trouble with you, Jane, is you don't recognize the truth when you hear it. Well, I'll tell you again. This machine, I think you called it a comic book contraption. Well, it works. It took me back into the past. You actually went back into the past? I'm going again. Come with me. We'll revisit the scenes of your childhood. No, Harry, no. Well, I'm going anyhow. Perhaps I can bring you a mentor. What would you like? Lillian Russell's fan, an autographed picture of President Taft, any proof at all, just name it. Harry, Harry, you mustn't do this, I'm afraid. Afraid? There's nothing to be afraid of. It's as safe as a baby. Oh, Harry, I'm not thinking of the machine, it's just that... Well, if what you say is true, you're tampering with something beyond your control and you shouldn't do it, Harry, it's wrong. Wrong? What's wrong about it? Some people look to the future for their success. I get mine out of the past. Oh, but Harry, you'll get into trouble, serious trouble. And what can you possibly gain by going back into the past? I wanted to bring them the benefits of penicillin. Thirty years before its time. But they wouldn't listen to me. They laughed at me and threw me out. By this time, I'm going back even further into the past. Back to 1910. What's more, I'll go to the same company. This time they'll pay. And pay plenty. Harry Mako, you're not going. Oh, I should have smashed this machine weeks ago. Harry, I beg you, destroy it. Promise me you won't go. I have a feeling that something terrible is going to happen. Maybe you're right, Jane, dear. But I must make just this one last journey. And I'll come back with more than enough to take care of us for the rest of our lives. Then I'll smash the machine. Harry, I give you my word. Now go. Tell me some more about this wonder drug, Dr. Marco. Oh, there's no use talking about it anymore, Dr. Giles. Let me demonstrate oh, it for come you. come now. You don't expect me to use this stuff on human beings before it's been tested, do you? But it's been tested over and over again. Where? In my laboratory. And where's that? I resent all these questions, Dr. Giles. If you have any doubts as to my integrity... Well, just a minute now. Just hold on a moment. I don't doubt your integrity. And I'm very much interested in you and your drug. Sit down. No, I've very little time. Tell me some more about the drug. Why should I tell you again? I know I'm wasting my time Not here. at all. Not at all. By the way, Marco, 
You are a physician, aren't you? That's insulting, Dr. Giles. What's the meaning of this? Simply this. You're a fraud, Marco. I'm having you arrested for posing as a physician. But I am a physician. Dr. Lasky, you know me. Tell him. I've searched every available record, sir. Marco's name isn't listed in any of them. Just as I suspected. But you're mistaken. I'm a graduate of Bellevue. What year? 1926. <laughs> oh, what is that? I know this is hard to believe, but... Here. Yeah. Take this drug, use it. I give it to you freely. Believe me, it'll cure almost anything. I've used it in hundreds of cases. It's a fungus made from bread mold. Just ordinary bread mold. Well, I have bread mold. Dr. Lasky, you're my friend. You know me, you help me. You believed in me. Take him out. No, I'm not insane. Take your hands off me. I came here to try to help you. I came out of the future from 1953. <laughs> I came in a machine, a time machine. <laughs> a time machine, eh? Hey, go with the officer, Mark. Go? Go where? To the hospital. You'll get well. No, no, I won't. All right, Doctor. We give you a lot of bread mold. You can make all the penicillin you want. No, no, use that drug. Use it, use it. It will save countless lives. <laughs> uh, bread mold, huh? <laughs> yeah. Poor fellow. No, it's a curious thing. I checked on that home address he gave us. There's a Harry Marco living there, all right. But he's only a boy. December 3rd, 1910. Cause of death, acute lobar pneumonia. Well, here's his precious penicillin. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be wonderful if there really were such a drug? Fine watch band by Chrysler. This one with curved links and curved ends is the Crescent, perfect for round watches. Or for a quality expansion band at a thrifty price, as low as $5.95, you'll find many Chrysler styles like this one. And for the man going into military service, this expansion bracelet with sterling silver nameplate is a wonderful gift. Chrysler watch bands give you the finest value, the widest selection. So remember, at jewelers everywhere, when you look for quality, look for Chrysler. Next week, see the dramatic return of a man reported missing for two years, forced at his homecoming to vanish again. Next week, Tales of Tomorrow presents Homecoming, starring Edith Fellows. This is ABC Television Network.